Hi guys. As you can see, I'm trying something new. This um avatar that I'm using for VTubing right now is actually uh Oni by Egg on Steam Workshop. So if you want to use this too, just go ahead and download it. It's completely free. You're allowed to use it, just give them credit. Okay. Anyway, we're gonna be reading Run to Litter. This is a uh, choose your own adventure novel that I've been reading for years. And frankly, I decided, fuck it, why not? It's a good story. Might get some good views off of it. So, let's start. You're elbow deep in ox guts when you hear the shouting. As a lowly thrall, it's none of your business. If there's trouble, your griffin keeper masters will deal with it. But they but will they deal with it in time? From the sound of, vo of voices, there will be violence soon. You glance around, certain of one of the other thralls working in the butcher shed will react. They remain focused, knives moving with rhythmic, practiced efficiency, as they cut meat for the griffins, too young, injured, or sick to hunt. But you're new to service in the Airy, the capital of the Vangrian Empire. Even as you try to remain diligent, you hear the voices through the flimsy walls of the shed. The first voice is loud and familiar. You and the speaker, Aini, have shared chores. He's a bit gruff, but he's been kind to you. The other voice is lower and has a cruel edge. You recognize Unner, one of the fledgling griffin keepers. He's your age, and as a fledgling, he's still in training. He has to obey his sponsor and any other senior griffin member, but you have to obey him, and does every as does every other thrall. You'll do what I say, thrall, says Unner, his voice hard with menace. Like worm dung, I will, shouts Aini. He really shouldn't speak to a griffin keeper that way, even if Unner is still fledgling. With a few words to the right people, Unner could have Aini sent to the front lines. You've heard about the war. The enemy is enormous, bright-skilled wyverns. Or wait, no, worms. Sorry. Filling the skies with fire. Aini wouldn't last the week. You'd better act fast. But you've got work to finish, too. Alright, so... Since we're friends with this guy, Aini, I'm thinking, why not help him? Makes sense to me. If I had a real friend and somebody was faking being a little prick, simple enough. Just walk up and see what's up with the situation and try to assist my friend and not the other party. Unless my friend is clearly in the wrong. But I mean, even then, I would obviously be very lenient to them. So, um, if Aini needs me, I have to help. I leave without stopping to clean up. You pull your arms out of the animal, dripping gore, and rush out to help Aini. Your arrival star startles Unner mid-swing. He barely misses Aini, who stands with his arms crossed defiantly. I can feed you the dust-feathered thrall, says Unner. He's tall, even for a griffin keeper. And his white and gray fledgling form uniform is so clean it looks new. He makes Aini, a short, broad boy, look dingy by comparison. However, Dustfeather, Hunter's eagle and panther griffin, says more about the fledgling than his clean uniform. Like all fledgling griffins, Dustfeather is all fluff and awkward angles. His adult plumage is just starting to come in, and his contour feathers stick out at odd angles, especially along his back, where feathers give way to the dull black of his panther coat. He is the right size for a young griffin, with his head reaching Hunter's elbow but he lacks the muscles he'll need to fly and fight. Everyone knows that Unar likes to skip practice. Unless he starts attending, Dustfeather will be intimidating but useless when he's fully grown. But he's still a better soldier than his keeper. While Unar remains oblivious to your presence, Dustfeather hisses as you approach. That gets Unar's attention. And who do you think you are? He asks. The way he looks at you, you wonder if he's seeing you at all, or if all thralls look the same to him. What should he be seeing? Well, I don't have the booba, so clearly I'm a guy. You're silent a moment too long, and Unner turns back to Aini. What's wrong with him? Doesn't he talk? Come on, give your name, Thrall. Unner takes a menacing step in your direction. Uh, I'm type my own one in. Let's go with uh, 
Dig Bar for shits and giggles. Because Dig Bar is the guy who made the Four Big Guys song. Well, Dig Bar, enjoy the show. Una turns his gaze to Idy. You'll lick my boots clean or you'll regret it. Dustfeather crouches with his wings folded against his body and lashing. His growl is high and squeaky, but his beak and talons make up for it. Aini remains standing, his gaze locked, unwavering, on Uner's face. Both, they both seem to have forgotten you. All around the training yard, fledglings and thralls attend to their duties. None of them try to interfere. It's up to you. Uh, okay, cool. The mic is being recorded. I just felt the need to double check. Let's minimize that. <laughs> All right. Um. So, realistically speaking, the best option would be to look for a senior Griffin Keeper, because like that's his boss or some shit. But I mean, also realistically, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I kick his fucking ass. Rush to Aini's side. It's dangerous, but it's the right thing to do. You hurry forward and stand shoulder to shoulder with Aini. Your sudden movements startle Dustfeather, who flinches as you take a step back. Oh, wait, no. Who flinches and takes a step back. Not as I step up. My bad. Throwing your lot in with this loser, Uner asks with a sneer. Good. You each take a boot. Dustfeather, with careful dignity of a cat caught hiding from his shadow, slinks up to stand behind Uber. You notice patches where his feathers have fallen out. Griffins tend to pluck themselves when they're anxious, perhaps belonging to Uber, causing the poor creature stress. Or he might have dropped feather. The griffin plague. Dozens have died already. Well, says Uber, tapping his boot theatrically in the mud, I'm waiting. Aini shifts his weight, clearly ready to start fighting again. You need to get rid of Uner and fast. Uh, let's see here. Threaten him with retribution from a sponsor. That sounds like being a fucking tattletale, but I mean, like, basically, gonna be like, pussy, fuck up. Oh, wait, I realized I don't have hands. Fuck. <laughs> My dumbass. Fucking hell. <laughs> you know, Dust Feather's not looking well. Yes, I say. And everyone knows you've been skipping training. I'm sure your sponsor will be very disappointed. Uner laughs at my threat. My sponsor would never listen to a dirty thrall. She won't need to, Ainy says. One look at Dust Feather and she'll know your screw up. It's not my fault you thralls don't take proper care of him, Uner growls, moving to stand in front of Dustfeather. I don't think your sponsor will care whose fault it is. I hear you're already on probation, I say. You don't know anything, Uner snaps. But I don't have time to argue. I have duties to attend to. He storms off towards the dorms. Sensing his anger, Dustfeather chirs anxiously and keeps close to his heels. He'll remember that, Aini says, shaking his head in disgust. Aini crosses his arms and frowns at you. Why'd you get involved anyway? Uh, because he's my fucking friend, I'll always have his back. I couldn't let him do that to you, I say. I've got your back. Yeah? Ani asks. His tone is dry, but he grins at you. Well, alright. I <laughs> guess I've got yours too. Before either of you, uh, us can say more, someone calls for Aini across the field. It's a Vanaret, overseer in charge of Griffin Care. She doesn't look happy. Back to work, Aini says. And you better get back to work too. And I better get back to work too. My butchering shift is well over, and I've got roosting mothers to care for in the rookery. To care for them properly, I'll need at least one bucket of meat for treats. You'll have, I'll have to fetch it quickly. I'm already running late. I will... Uh, I know all the major supply sheds will stop in my way. Because, like, if I work here, I'm going to know where shit's at, right? <clears throat> I checked the storage shed nearest to the rookery. Sure you'll sure you'll find it fully stocked. Instead, it's nearly empty, and the few remaining buckets of meat are crawling with flies. You take the best of them, wishing you had planned better. Bucket in hand, you hurry towards the rookery. Thrall, come here. 
The voice is clipped and imperious. You, find it's, you turn to find nearest a fledgling, and her barn owls and snow leopard griffin, Cold Talon. Nearest's reputation for unfriendliness is matched only by her reputation for brilliance. Yes, nearest man, I ask. Cold Talon is off his feed. How would you describe his feathers? She's clearly worried about the drop feather plague that's sickening so many griffins. I circle Cold Talon once. His plumage is ice white, clean, and perfectly healthy. Um, I'm gonna say that one. He looks healthy. No signs of drop feather. I'm sure he's just being picky little shit. Healthy, Miris asks. Her words cold. Are you a healer now? I asked how he looked, not for your opinion about his health. Well, he looks healthy. I say. Come, Cold Talon, here says, no longer looking at you. We're going to the healers. Well, you tried. Some people don't appreciate a kind word. With the shrug, you the last few yards to the rookery. That's chapter one. I'm, uh, I'm keeping it short for editing reasons. Because I'm a lazy little bitch. And it's already 12 minutes. And let's be honest, that's long enough for one episode. And if I do one episode a chapter... Then realistically, I can get way more episodes out of this. I'm going to be completely transparent with you viewers because I don't want to seem like I'm playing games or some shit, trying to change opinions or change what I do just for the sake of uh, views. I'm going to just be completely open about my strategy so that you know what I'm thinking, what I'm doing. So, uh, yeah. Like, subscribe, and I guess I'll see you guys next time. If you watch, I should probably cut that out. Nah, I won't. Anyway, bye.